SV math teacher back again. We are really working through this unit on the Pythagorean theorem. Today we're going to talk about applying the Pythagorean theorem in three-dimensional questions. Now these tend to be a little more time consuming, so feel free to stop or, you know, stop watching <laughs> whenever you feel like you need to. But I have two examples here, and I'll show you both of them in case you're watching the video trying to get some hints. In this first question, uh, first Question, it says, um, Amazon has a lot of different boxes they use to ship purchased items. I received my newly purchased umbrella in the box below. What's the maximum length of the umbrella? And the idea would be, what's the maximum distance from here, the whole way across the inside of the shape, the whole way over to the opposite corner? If you can visualize what that looks like, or maybe I'll draw it a different way, from this corner to this corner, like what's the length of that thing? Now that might be a pretty common three-dimensional question. The other one is going to be, very simply, what's the height of this pyramid, given a couple different measurements? So if one or the other looks good to you, you can tune into just that part. If not, here we go. Um, in this question, it's, it's a box, right? It's a rectangular uh, solid, so all of the corners are 90-degree corners. I'm not going to mark them all, but I'm going to note that they exist. I'm also going to go ahead and have on my drawing the thing I'm trying to find. And I'm going to try to force somewhere in here, I'm going to try to force a 90 degree triangle. And there is a 90 degree triangle that has the question mark as the hypotenuse. Okay, great. What do I do with that? Well, look at a couple of these things, right? Imagine this length right here is 6 inches. That means that this length back here is 6 inches as well. So I'm going to put a 6 on this. Okay, great. So now I know one of the sides of the blue, but I'll switch colors up here. I don't know this one because that would really help me out. But here's what I do know. I know that this is 8, so so is this. And this side is 24. And finally, I know that it's a, a rectangular box, so this is a 90 degree corner. So if you can imagine looking at this triangle down here on the bottom that I'm coloring in, that's a right triangle. If I redraw that right triangle just to make it look a little bit like something we're used to, this is the 8, this is the 24, and this is this. Is this. So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You should be pretty familiar with it at this point. 8, 24, and C squared. 64 and, let's see, 24 squared is 576. Um, 576 and the 64 make 640. And the square root of 6 40 is approximately 25.298, so 3. So is approximately C. So that means that this side is 25.3. So now I'm going to erase some of the stuff that I don't need anymore. I'm going to erase this highlighting, this highlighting, this highlighting, and I'm going to look at the interior triangle, this one right here. Okay. If I focus on that interior triangle only, here's what I have. I have a right triangle. This side is 6. This is 25.3. We've estimated it at 25.3. And this missing side is what I'm ultimately looking for, the length of the umbrella. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 6 squared and well, look, the 25.3, for what it's worth, the 25.3, if I re-squared it, would be 640. So I'm just going to kind of jump ahead to 640. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit. 6 squared equals 36. So you can follow that, right? And 36 and 640, 36 plus 640 is 676. And now I'm going to square root both sides to get rid of the square. So the square root of 676 is oh, 26. Nice even number. So because it, I don't have to round it, I'm going to say it's exactly equal to C. So then 26 inches is the maximum umbrella. All right. So I was able to take a three-dimensional shape. I did have to create some stuff and kind of do a two-step process, like step number one, step number two. That's very, very common. 
If this is all you need, stop the video now. If you've been looking for the triangle, well, time to restart the video. In this question, we're trying to find the height of the pyramid. Now, very similar to the last one, the height of the pyramid is a length that I don't immediately know. I also recognize that I could probably draw a line over here, and that would give me a right triangle. But again, problem is on this one, I have two missing sides. I have the original black question mark, which is the thing I'm trying to find, and I have this blue question mark. The only thing I know is the 16, and that's just not enough information. So let's see what else we can do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and instead of drawing this one diagonal, I'm going to draw it the whole way across. Look what I have now. I'm going to take this out. I have the 8, the right triangle, and the 10 with a long hypotenuse that I can find. If I can calculate that long hypotenuse and I cut it in half, that'll give me what I need right here. And that'll give me two sides, and I can find the third. So that's the kind of thinking that you need to put together. So let's go ahead and see if we can find this long length, right? Because reality says we really just have a right triangle. One side is 8, one side is 10, and the long side that's kind of highlighted in green here, that's this piece. So 8 squared and 10 squared equals c squared. 64 and 100 is c squared. 164 is c squared. So the square root of 164 is 12.8. 1 is approximately equal to c. So we have that. Now we did say that we would want to cut that in half because we don't need the whole thing. We only need half of it, right? We only need this portion right here. So I'm going to take my 12.81, I'm going to divide it in half. Good thing it's on my calculator, so divide that by 2, and I get 6.4. So 6.4 is approximately equal to, well, this side length. Okay, so now I have a right triangle. I have the original black question mark, which is what I'm trying to find. I have the side I just found, 6.4, and I have this 16 here that was labeled from the beginning. Okay, so let's figure that out. We're done. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 6.4 squared plus b squared equals 16 squared. So to the calculator, 16.4 squared is 40.96. B squared, I don't know. C squared is 256. Subtract 40.96 from both sides. So I'll do that here, minus 40.96. And I get 215.04 is B squared. I'm going to square root both sides. So the square root of 215. 14.04 is going to be 14.66. So B is approximately equal to 14.66. We were in centimeters, so centimeters and done. All right. So what you should take away from this video is you often have to do a first step in order to get to a second step in order to solve the problem and be all done. So don't be scared to do that. Don't be scared to get creative and try some new things. You can't break the problems. You can always just erase and try again. So good luck.